Thank you very much, Marissa. And you and I both know Jill very well. Lori, we're huge fans. <laughs> I was when she played for Sky Blue and I was calling their games in Jersey, but even more so having worked with her now in, in the broadcast field. Yeah, there's no surprise that Kaylin Sheridan has made so many steps forward working with Jill and just her understanding, her discipline, and her professionalism as a, as a player was second to none. So exciting to see that partnership develop throughout Sheridan's career. Sky Blue in Utah kick off a new day in the NWSL Challenge Cup. Second game for both these sides. A win pushes the winner into second place. A draw would see the teams tied in third. Sky Blue in white. Utah in blue tops. Barrow settled it initially, got away from Amon, who started six games a year ago and gets a chance to start here today. What did you make out of Mitch Purse at outside back? Because even talking with the Sky Blue coaching staff, they're aware there are calls for her to play higher up the field. <laughs> I liked her in the back. I think her understanding defensively and her positioning allows her to get forward quickly something that Sky Blue is looking for her out, especially out in the wide area. Allows them to create chances, create overloads. And also, when you think about this team going forward, you still have Carly Lloyd, Mal Pugh, weren't able to be available for this tournament. Players that will most likely play in those advanced positions. So, Midge Purse asking to occupy that outside back position, but also be able to aid in, add into the attack is going to be important piece when you look into the future for Sky Blue. Yeah, they emphasize the importance of thinking long-term. Freya Coom in her first full season as the head coach wants to have a longer tenure than maybe the recent head coaches of Sky Blue have been able to attain. And Mitch Purse might be a big reason why she's able to outlast those former staffs. Purse to throw. Waldmo chips it back. Purse, who has so much freedom on that right-hand side, can really create numbers up opportunities. Eddie. Eddie, great move. Got by Delfava. Delfava forces this into a throw. Good start by Elizabeth Eddie when she came into the game on Tuesday night. I loved her ability to be able to link play with those midfielders. Just give them a different look. Patience in the attack. Nearly three minutes into this game, and Sky Blues held the ball for the vast majority of that time. That's something that we're going to talk about time and time again because Coombe, Becca Morris, their assistant coach, continue to talk about their ability to hold possession, be just more patient in the final third, but also in the buildup. If they can continue to do that, they feel like they can expose some space in that midfield and out wide in those pockets as we just see them attempting there in behind those wing backs on the outside of the center backs for Utah. We saw Sheridan's range of passing, the conversation with Coach Coombe and Certainly, I think with Jill Lloyden as well, she has continued to develop her feet, able to play that short pass when it's given, but drop it into space, nearly unleash Sky Blue up that far wing. Four saves on Tuesday in an opening draw against O.L. Reign. Mike, when you talk about a team... Heavy hop and Rodriguez follows through. Rodriguez from a difficult angle sends this skying over. And right idea by Utah right off the bat. Haven't seen much possession, but as soon as they get it, looking to play Ratcliffe and Rodriguez over the top, see if they can expose those two center backs. Real getting her first start of this tournament. 
Something they want to work on, Utah transitional play. Good turn by Monahan to set this up and paced too far for VN. But to my point a second ago about Sheridan, and this is a sky blue team that is very much in transition in terms of principles of play, what they want to do on the field, and be bolder in possession is absolutely one of those. And that starts with Sheridan in goal. She has set, up, set herself apart with her ability to have the ball at her feet and play make out of the back. And, and in the past, we've seen to just alleviate pressure by launching balls forward and then have to regroup under there. You're going to need that. But if you can have a player starting with your goalkeeper that can keep possession, you can build from there. Taken away from Richardson and lumped over the top. Ratcliffe. Rodriguez. Ratcliffe again. Closed down. Purse committed a foul. Free kick Utah. Great spot on the field to work from. Although not one would think in Farrow's shooting range. She had a tremendous free kick in the opening match for Utah 3-3 draw against Houston. And coming into this game, Harrington mentioned he wants to find Ratcliffe and Rodriguez early and often, more than he did in their first game already these last two minutes, putting Sky Blue defense under some pressure. Farrell might not be shooting from here, but equally lethal looking for a head. The 33-year-old Spanish national team star, 38 goals and 56 appearances before her international career. Appears to have concluded in 2017. Farrow delivers to Peach of the ball. High hop off the turf. Lift it up again. Corsi is forward. Rodriguez gives chase. Ratcliffe holding off. And now Sky Blue able to get it out. Matheson. Look at that effort. Spiraling off into the corner, Rodriguez. Oh, Amy Rodriguez fouled. I don't think fans recognize, unless they get an angle like that, just how, how skillful and impressive and quick a player like Amy Rodriguez is, even compared to other great pros. And she does such a good job. Just a quick little nutmeg here on purse. And then... Looks like she sells that foul a bit, but good on her. Does all the work that she needs to be prior to that, beating two defenders, showing why she's so skillful on the ball. But all of this starts by Sky Blue having a difficult time clearing that ball, and as soon as they do, Utah all over that and looking to transition quickly. The yellow to purse, more on that in a moment. Barrow delivers, and this time scooped up by Sheridan, who may have taken a knock to the back of the head as well. Of note on Purse's yellow card, a second yellow in the preliminary stage would result in a one-game suspension for the following match. Only two players in this game came in on yellow cards, and they're the two forwards for Utah, Rodriguez and Ratcliffe. And that's something that Utah can keep an eye on, continue to attack Mitch, per Mitch Purse down that left-hand side, see if they can create a opportunity to see if she'll get another yellow. Just something to think about. Little details in these games that do make a difference. Ball slips into space. Purse. again out of Harvard, the first member of the Crimson soccer team to be drafted into the NWSL. This bounces all the way back.
They win a corner. I think if you're sky blue, you want to get that possession that we saw in the first, especially three, four minutes further up the field. And in this case, a set piece for sky blue to work with. That's something we're going to keep an eye on throughout this game, Mike. The balance between keeping possession for New Jersey, but also can they play a bit more direct, see if they can find space in behind those three center backs for Utah. Corner for Sky Blue. Iffy clearance lead to another. What does Freya Coombe and Sky Blue have in the bag here? They go short. And now they deliver. And this is something I think that we're really going to start to see from all the teams in this tournament going forward is different set pieces, everyone tightening up defensively. But when it comes to the attack, starting to see more creative opportunities, something a lot of the coaches touched on was coming into this tournament, they don't know what's going to work because they've only been playing <laughs> against themselves. So now that they've seen the opposition, they've seen what they've been able to bring into this tournament, they're going to start to dive into their kind of the arsenal to figure out, okay, let's try some things. Let's see if we can pull some of these teams out. As a player who's played with the national team and, and many, many pro teams, how often are you tweaking or just outright creating new set pieces in the run of a normal season, much less in a tournament format like this where you only have a couple days off? Well, I think it depends on your personnel. I mean, if, you have, if you're stacked with players that are good in the air, that have the ability to score goals right off of set pieces, then you just work on the delivery and the finishing component of it. But if you don't have that aerial presence, then you've got to be able to be a little bit more tricky, be a little bit more creative to pull teams out defensively and see if you can find little pockets of space. Up the line toward Ratcliffe. Ratcliffe spinning with a blast. In my first 10 minutes, we see so Utah going a little bit more direct right off the bat, seeing if they could spring the likes of Rodriguez and Ratcliffe. But now, space is starting to open up in that midfield from them being able to stretch the game. So now, can they keep possession? Matheson, Vero, so important in that first game in terms of their work rate, being able to get on the ball, calming things down when needed. They're going to need that today, especially with the build-up play that Sky Blue likes to employ. Building decently enough now as Kawasumi sent it forward. Eddie. Eddie creates the space, got the shot away, stabbed free, and sent toward midfield. But only for a moment. Purse. Matheson helps to defend. Matheson again scored after a lengthy span out of the league due to injury. Wonderful to see her back in after missing 2019 a foot surgery. Kawasumi hold up play from Bien. And that was one of the big stories I think of the first week of this tournament. Players who had missed significant portions of time finally getting back on the field and for Matheson I imagine that was a very sweet goal for Utah well after missing the entire 2019 season has been successful at every level that she's played on and primarily not just because of her ability on the field but also how she is in the locker room her personality what she demands from her teammates could tell what that added to their team in their opening match of this tournament. Memon, back post, had her knocked down and wide. Strom Okamoto getting forward, undrafted in 2019, only appeared in three games last year, played less than 20 minutes, but a huge role early on, especially with Kelly O'Hara out to injury. And Amy Rodriguez, Rodriguez doing such a good job of being active, pulling players back freeze open Mamone. She sends this one in, and then it's so easy for Flores. Loses her mark. Sean Makamoto with a late run in that far post. Should do better on that. Just knock that back down across the goal line. See if you can get another attempt. 
But it's those little things in the back for Sky Blue that they're going to need to shore up. It's too easy to allow a player like Sean Makimoto on that weak side to be able to roam free, get in behind. Up the wing again, Shell Mamone. Farrell. Farrell making the move and now floats it long and Sheridan calls off the defense. We're in the 17th minute between Utah and Sky Blue. NWSL Challenge Cup. It is the second match day for each of these teams, both on one point, opening draws. Sky Blue against O.L. Reign, Utah against Houston. Now against one another, a chance to move into second or third with a positive result of some sort. We give a lot of credit to what Utah has done to help put this tournament on through owner Deloy Hansen and we spoke with Taryn Meyer and some of the PR staff about the folks in Utah who have put an immense amount of effort. He is really proud of that group and they should be. Let's go down to Marissa Pilla for more on what's going on on the Utah bench. Marissa? I talked with Utah assistant coach Amy LaPelbit, and she told me right now Utah is looking really good in terms of their press and how they're able to stretch Sky Blue on defense. She said they like how they're able to pull them to one side and then switch the point of attack through their midfield to the weak side, continuing to get balls in over the top and serve as Brittany Radcliffe and Amy Rodriguez. I completely agree. I mean, they found some space early on playing more direct, allowed some space to open up in that midfield that we knew was going to be tight coming into this game with how many numbers are on both sides in that midfield. To be able to switch the point of attack and then looking for little pockets of space, a position that Vero occupies really well in between those, the back line and the midfield line for Sky Blue. So difficult to defend. So can they continue to find them and then look for the runners of Amy Rodriguez and Ratcliffe to either slip through or go herself. It's a set piece for Sky Blue here in the 19th minute. Feathered over the back line. Horsey helps to nod that wide. Good recovery for Sky Blue to get possession. Scored by Flores, who's on it again. Turning effort by Richardson. combination broke down. If you think about Utah's back three, even Craig Arrington will admit it, there's that space in wide channels, wide areas to really get at this Utah side. It seems Sky Blue in the early going, whether it be Sheridan with long balls forward or through their buildup, have been trying to get out there in order to stretch things to help a player like Kawasumi in the middle. Well, I think they could still find that more often as well. They're starting to find pockets of space to be able to keep possession, something that we know that they want to do, that they feel the most comfortable out at building through the midfield. But can they be a little bit more direct? They haven't called VN's name very much. Elizabeth Eddy's had a little bit of success down this right-hand side, but still, those are spaces that they can really get after against Utah, and they haven't tested them enough in this first 20 minutes. And with Kawasumi dropping into the midfield, such a smart technical player that can make runs into support. Why not play a little bit more direct, see if you can take some risks, and then the likes of Kawasumi, Waldmo can get underneath and create some numbers up situations. On the other side, can they get Amy Rodriguez, Brittany Ratcliffe going to create space for the likes of Vero and Matheson? An oft-discussed tactic. 
coming into this game. Belongs to Utah. Elizabeth Ball. Rodriguez had that drop right onto her foot. Ratcliffe spreads it out. Settles for Labonta, the former Sky Blue draft pick, who pushes it over the top now. Nearly for Mathis and Ratcliffe. Ratcliffe delivers right at Sheridan. Good variety of play by Utah. We see the work rate of those two midfielders. Vero and Diana Matheson making sure they track back, forcing Sky Blue for this quick turnover. Now they have the ball. They're staying patient. What I like from this Utah team so far is just their ability to switch to the point of attack, something we heard Marissa Pilla say a few moments ago. But then also there's so much room in the midfield. Sky Blue is dropping so far back so early. It's allowing Labonte to get on the ball and then play make from those areas. Sky Blue has got to step up the pressure, get out earlier. It's too easy right now for Utah to have their way with the attack. We, we asked about the tactics of this specific lineup, a 3-5-2. Oftentimes has wingbacks and then sixes and eights, essentially holding midfielders and more box-to-box -box midfielders would be another way to put that. In possession, they want two eights in Matheson and Fierro and one six in Levanta, and then they want to be able to switch into two sixes and an eight when they're in a defensive structure. With that in mind, if you have that space further back, are you willing to allow a Matheson or a Barrow to drop deeper and almost play as another six to orchestrate if the space is there? Absolutely, you want them to be able to have the fluidity. That's why you have those two players, so much experience. Allow them to roam free. Be disciplined on defense, as you mentioned, dropping two players deep to make sure they have that cover defensively. But then when it comes to the attack, allow players to be able to free, free themselves up, get into other little areas of the, where they see the space is available. Darrell, shadowed by Richardson. Ball, now the space wide. From Okamoto, Ratcliffe came up high. Got a piece of real. And Sky Blue doing a good job of committing numbers in that back. They are deep, but they're making it difficult for any sort of little combination play in and around the front of their goal. So Utah, can they be a bit more patient, continue to switch the point of attack in and around their 18? and then look for options to open up even more, see if they can pull that final line of defense of Sky Blue out. Flores. Vien. Does have good speed. by Del Faba. Levanta. Matheson. Right there. See how low this pressure is by Sky Blue. No one's stepping to the ball. That's Elizabeth Ball, your right center back, coming up into your attacking half, and no one's stepping up tight enough. Levanta. Shipped off one touch by Maimon. Sheridan's got it. I 
fear for this Sky Blue team if they just plan on sitting back the majority of the game defensively because with the likes of the players that Utah have, it's, it's going to be a difficult to hold them off in terms of goal scoring abilities. They got to try to be a little bit braver in the attack, see if they can find VN's feet and then build off of that. Too direct and too predictable in the attack right now. And it's making it easy for Utah to defend. Hey, we haven't seen him yet. Greg Arrington, year one. 37 year old. Played at Oxford United and Swindon Town. Last two years as an assistant for Rory Danes in Chicago. The referee saying that was a dangerous approach from Rodriguez, who is on a yellow card for the tournament, but not in this game. The next wouldn't mean she'd be sent off of this game, but rather she'd be suspended for Utah's third game. Comes against O.L. Rain on Wednesday. Sky Blue getting right after it on the restart. Flores and Monahan have been working together on the left-hand side. More of the same here. Strom Okamoto. We'll turn it aside momentarily. Now Vienne and ball. Perfect defense. A oh, good touch by Vienne there to almost set herself free. And this is a better build-up play. Just patience. Get Kawasumi on the ball. Allow her to work her magic and link up. That's why they dropped her into the midfield to get her on the ball more. Of course, you'll help orchestrate out of the back. Delfava. You've got players like Ball and Delfaba, one of which has experience in this league, the other none, but nothing like the experience of a Rachel Corsi. <laughs> that is the perfect, perfect uh, fulcrum in the middle of your back three. And that's why they're, they're able to try out this formation is because they have her experience back there. Her ability to lead this team, and, and it goes back to what we are talking about with it. Diana Matheson, Vero, Amy Rodriguez, not only their ability on the field, but in the locker room, their leadership, their understanding about this league and what it takes to win games. Matheson ahead too far for Ratcliffe. You know, Laura Harvey, the former coach at Utah, now with the U.S. Youth National Team, described her mind as similar to her former protege in Seattle, Lauren Barnes which is a really high compliment when you think about Lauren Barnes' IQ, former Defender of the Year in this league. But, of course, he's got well over 100 national team caps for Scotland, took them to the Women's World Cup. And any time you have a player that has that amount of experience that can lead your back line, you're in a good position, especially with the departure of Becky Sauerbrunn. We know that her leadership on and off the field and so Rachel, of course, is going to have to step up, but already in a new formation, the belief that you see that Craig Harrington has instilled in this team, even just these first two games of the tournament, has been unbelievable in a short amount of time. Labanta, good looking ball, but offside. <laughs> on the bottom of your screen, you can see Vero <laughs> upset about that one. Wide open, she was ready to get that ball and start running to the back line. But that's what these, these balls over the top will do, is free up the likes of Vero. We see her being able to be fluid, come popping out wide, coming underneath Mamone, who's making that run. Some versatility in their attack. Well, the grease board is out, so too cold bottles of water. Temperatures in the mid-80s at kickoff will reach into the low 90s on this 4th of July 
matinee between Utah and Sky Blue. First time either of these teams have played on Independence Day. Scoreless through about 31 minutes at the hydration break as you're watching the NWSL on CBS Sports. Scoreless here between Utah and Sky Blue. And when you think about players who are around the league from its incarnation to now, Becca Moros has to be front of mind for many fans. For more on what she's doing, let's go to Marissa Pilla. Sky Blue assistant coach Becca Moros has played 11 years in the NWSL, and she told me that experience with the league has helped her really transition into her time as a coach with Sky Blue FC. She said her familiarity with not just the coaches, but the players and the systems has helped Sky Blue turn a new leaf heading into this tournament. She said she's been inspired by several of her coaches throughout her career, from her youth teams to former Reign head coach and current U.S. Women's National Team head coach, Vlako Andonovsky, but she also said a lot of her coaching comes from her playing time in Japan. A lot of the players say they also recognize a Japanese style of play that Sky Blue has started to adopt. And also, Moro serves as somewhat of an interpreter for Kawasumi on most media availability. Thanks, Marissa. And 11 years as a pro, what, it's seven years in the NWSL leading into this year, but Moro's a, just a spectacular human being. You've known her for a long time. Um, and I've had the fortune of being, yes, a longtime friend and a teammate. And I, uh, she is such a student of the game. And as Marissa touched on, so invaluable for this Sky Blue team to be able to have her and that relationship with the players, how much she wants to watch video. She's doing all of these things. And she said her mind's blowing up. But then Sky Blue has been able to... Sky Blue has been able to give them the opportunity, her the opportunity to be able to do more and have more of an impact than she thought coming into this first season. Becca Moros and Sky Blue Brain Trust working together there. It, it's been an up and down handful of years. Jim Gabera into Christy Holly, Denise Reddy, and now Freya Coombe. Now let's talk about this Becca Morrow situation a little bit as an assistant. Jill Lloyden was the goalkeeping coach for their uh, team for a long time. The more players from this league who move into coaching roles, broadcasting roles like yourself, management roles. In Jill's case, it's private coaching for professionals all the way down to collegiate and high school keepers. The women's game needs that progression, and it's coming now. It's exciting. And there's a desire for players to give back and the amount of experience they've had playing. And, and being able to speak with Becca Morrow, she was like, you know, it was just my time in terms of hanging up the boots, and I knew this is my calling. This is what I want to do. I'm a I'm a teacher of the game, and to be able to do this and get the opportunity from Sky Blue. Oh, oh. just got underneath Rodriguez's feet. <laughs> Beautiful ball by Vero. Penetrates that back line, slips it through, and yeah, unfortunate touch from Amy Rodriguez. But in regards to Becca Moros, it's the playing experience is what's going to set her apart in this coaching and understanding the grind of the league. This was almost a highlight reel goal, as it is a highlight reel worthy pass. And this is where Barrow's at her best, penetrating that back line, getting on the dribble, and that's an excellent run by Amy Rodriguez. You can see, just changes speed, changes her pace, gets herself into a good position in between the outside back and center back for Sky Blue. It's just the final touch that lets her down. It didn't feel like Kaylee Real was in a bad position either, but that's definitely a welcome to the league when Barrow's threading passes through your back line. And that's one of the difference makers, makers that Amy Rodriguez brings, though, too, is that change of speed. I mean, she sprints to get herself in a position, and that last minute, another little acceleration to be able to get that ball in her front foot. She steps on it in an unfortunate way. 36th minute scoreless between Utah and Sky Blue. Both teams in their second game of a four-game preliminary round in the NWSL Challenge Cup, both coming off one-point performances, albeit one with 
six goals and the other with no goals, but still level on points in the eight-team standings leading into the quarterfinal round where seeding could be paramount, deciding your path towards a potential Challenge Cup title. Ball up the line. Just a tad too far for Strom Akimoto. Price is Strom Akimoto signed after the World Cup last year out of Hawaii. The last alum in the NWSL out of Hawaii was Natasha Kai, who, of course, was around Sky Blue for a while. Most recently in 2016. After being a national team replacement player, has really started to find a, a little more time here in this tournament. Kelly O'Hara, we were told, day to day, so that could complicate the wing back position a little bit. Although I think every Utah Royals FC fan, most NWSL fans, would be excited to see Kelly back in the lineup sooner than later. But it's those things, Mike, like the short build up coming into this tournament, some players being unavailable. You just mentioned Kelly O'Hara that has allowed Sean Akimoto to be able to work her way into this starting lineup. And honestly, being able to play in a different formation that suits her and the way that they, that she wants to play has been beneficial. A lot of players taking advantage, some of these young players taking advantage of the opportunities they're getting in this Challenge Cup tournament. Matheson playmaking deep. Ratcliffe will run into this midfield. Lead Matheson forward. Ball drops down. Rodriguez didn't get a clean strike. They wanted to see her get in better positions in this game to receive the ball, get better service. She's certainly done that. She's had more opportunities this time around. She stays centrally where she's at her best, right in front of the goal. And credit to Diana Matheson, Vero in the midfield. These players making runs. Ratcliffe's coming back to the ball, allowing Amy Rodriguez to stay central. They pull Mitch Purse out, and then it frees up Diana Matheson. And that's a great delivery. Difficult to try to finish. They whip your body around to hit this first time. And you can see she doesn't get a good look at it, but still continues to cause some issues for that defense for Sky Blue. With the possession, the movement out of the midfield for Utah, allowing them to find some spaces in behind the back line. Sky Blue. Matheson. First was there once. Delfaba. Not by Waldmo. And now slipped ahead. Ratcliffe had to go right between her legs to Sheridan. And I think Ratcliffe was actually trying to let that ball roll through her leg, and she was going to hope, hope to get on the end of it, but just... Heavy touch, her final pass from Vero, too heavy for Rackless to be able to let that one go through. Would have done better if she had taken a little outside the foot touch. Played in the middle, Vero. Now for Rodriguez, Rodriguez scores! Another picture-perfect run for A-Rod. Royals FC lead. And Craig Harrington wanted Amy Rodriguez and Brittany Ratcliffe to get on the ball much more in this first half than he saw in that first game. And they've done that. Ratcliffe and Rodriguez combined, beat the Sky Blue players on that flank and then in wide open Vera that's where you want your number 10 
in those pockets of space, and she just threads a beautiful ball into the path of Amy Rodriguez, who times her run perfectly, and then just slots that one low. The only place that Sheridan wouldn't be able to get to, that far post. And the secret virtual watch party has something to cheer for here. First goal of the tournament for Amy Rodriguez. Four goals, four different goal scorers. Vero scored in the first game of this tournament, but Vero has had just incredible service in this game. You're seeing all the different avenues in which Vero can affect a game. You could argue by doing so, you're seeing all the avenues A-Rod can affect a game. Well, the two of them are just partnering up perfectly in this game, and credit to Vero, just her positioning. We see her drift wide a lot. She likes to get on the ball, stayed more centrally in this game, where I think she can be more dangerous. And they've been patient in their buildup. They found space out wide. Kawasumi looking for Eddie. And up until this last, this goal, it's just that final pass that was missing or final touch. Everything came together seamlessly for that goal. That run by Amy Rodriguez, we saw something similar in the goal with Labonta threading that ball through. The Amy Rodriguez slotted it across to Diana Matheson for their first goal in their first game. The midfielders occupying some good space. And some good final passes. Launched forward again. Real with Ratcliffe. And look at the work rate. Fair Utah missing some significant pieces as well for a variety of reasons. Sky blue into the final. Harrington coming into this game was originally we were starting to play this 3 5 2 because it really fits our style of play, the personnel that we have, and then missing some significant pieces. He's like, well, we're going to go for it. <laughs> All right, Labonta is <laughs> we'll now see. our holding midfielder because <laughs> yeah. Scott's not here and O'Hara would have been playing wing back and instead we've got some younger players getting an opportunity out there and he he said multiple times you're only as good as your center forward and Kristen Press is one of the very best center forwards on the planet and honestly what this says to me though is if you have an understanding of what you're going to do your style of play then the principles are always going to outweigh what formation you're going to play doesn't really matter as long as you can get the puzzle pieces together and your team knows what you want to try to accomplish Kawasumi got it out to Purse. He bagged a bunch of goals last year in Portland. Purse, an eight-goal season to really break out. That got the arm of Ratcliffe. We're a minute through. First half stoppage time. At halftime, we'll hear from Christy Mewis ahead of Houston's game tonight against O.L. Reign. So take a look at first half highlights, stats, and gear you up for what's coming up tomorrow. Some big names and big matchups. Set piece here for Sky Blue. If you're Sky Blue, how do you get a player like VN into the game more? How do you get Kawasumi in a position to make a bigger impact moving forward into the second half? You have to have better movement off the ball, but you got to get the likes of a Sarah Waldno, a key player in terms of the buildup, out of the midfield, her tactical understanding, her positioning, but we haven't seen her, so there's nobody in the midfield that's able to get their foot on the ball, speed things up when they need to, and take charge. You're really lacking, to me, what feels like any sort of like leadership on the field of, this is what we're going to do, get me the ball, and let me take over. It's too predictable in their play. Sometimes we see them go long, but it's easy for Utah to clean up, and then when they keep possession they're switching the point of attack but they're not forcing Utah to answer any questions in the attack or excuse me in the defense 
should be at halftime here. And it's off to the dressing room. Amy Rodriguez, the opening goal for Utah in the 41st minute. All in all, really positive things to build on there for Utah. Creative in the attack. Inches outside the penalty area. And Del Fava walking over to the referee, showing a yellow card. It's her first of the tournament. And Ekaterina Koroleva saying this is indeed outside the penalty area. And fast start from... Sky blue, exactly what you want to see coming in off of that halftime. I feel like Freya Coom be able to like help her team in terms of what they're looking for and send players like Mitch Purse into the attack, allow for numbers up situation. Good run by Mitch Purse. If you're Del Faba, that's probably a foul you're willing to concede because the number of white shirts pushing in, that, that was really dangerous. You got to imagine that's what Freya Coom talked about is getting more numbers into the box. Quick transition, quicker play, quicker tempo, getting into the attack. Set piece here for Sky Blue FC looking to equalize. Utah scored in the 41st, and Sky Blue score right out of the break and get their first of 2020. This is hammered high. Let's go down to Marissa Pilla, who has information at halftime from Sky Blue head coach Freya Coombe. I spoke with Sky Blue head coach Freya Coombe at the half and she said in terms of creating more quality possession they need to make quicker decisions on the ball and be more quick in their movements and decisions. She said we haven't shown up for each other in this first half. We need to change that right now. And we were talking about just the movement off the ball was non-existent in that first half. They couldn't get, once it got possession though it was too slow in terms of trying to break down Utah's defense and they didn't really ever put them under pressure force Utah to get out of shape and, and then exploit some little spaces it was too predictable and too easy to defend Flores is down Flores back on her feet out of Notre Dame the defender and midfield there playing outside back in her second professional season. Jennifer Cujo has come on as well at the break for Sky Blue, and fans, I think, are falling in love with her. We, we spoke a lot, I think, about Zierra King from Utah, who may see time later on as Ratcliffe is offside, but sort of makes you think a star is born kind of deal with how well she performed. There's King on the bench. We saw her dancing pregame and has this joyous personality that comes through every time you see her. And with Cujo, when we saw her enter that first game on Tuesday night against O.L. Reign, just the simplicity in her movement, the, how simple she was playing the ball, just connecting with teammates, keeping possession. And with a young squad that's in transition, like Sky Blue, that's exactly what you need. Somebody that's just going to settle things down, be disciplined in your approach when you're out in the field. We see Utah being able to have some more fluidity because they have more experience. With Sky Blue team, they might have to play a little bit more predictable in terms of just quicker movements, connect passes, and then wait for the space to open up for them. 26 years old, first year in the NWSL. It's when you dig into her collegiate journey that things get really interesting. Went to Northeastern Oklahoma A&M, and when she's done there, went to Northeastern Oklahoma State University the junior college player of the year. Bowen. It's a good leading ball. Ratcliffe stayed on side and drives the cross toward Rodriguez. Pujo went through that challenge with her studs exposed. 
Ball slow to get up. Cujo making, Cujo making her mark already defensively. Something that Freya Kuhn, I imagine, had to have said in the halftime in their locker room, just let's step up defensively too. These are some things that we can control, our pressure on the ball, make sure we're tight as a unit. Stop allowing so much space in the midfield for Utah to be able to roam. Set piece here for Utah. Farrell. Just to the right of the penalty spot. Picked up by Sheridan. And we've seen some time with the Canadian national team. Throw for Utah. The Utah side that last year averaged over 10,000 fans. Rio Tinto Stadium, which will play host to the final in this tournament. This is Zion's Bank, about 20 minutes away from Rio Tinto, outside of Salt Lake City in Harriman. But a franchise that sprang out of the ground a couple of years ago to such phenomenal fanfare. I mean, it, it is a very quick line from expansion team to off and on field success. Ball ahead to Ratcliffe, she was off. Sheridan doesn't care for that move at the end. That's a good look, though, and this is why the important, the wide space is so important for Utah in the first half. Sean Makimoto and now Katie Bowen, their ability to pull New Jersey out of their space, bring them in, and then be able to send the likes of Rodriguez or Ratcliffe through. Ball through on a Manu continues to chase, makes it interesting. Abby Smith, who has had a negligible impact, if any at all, thus far, she has not been put under much of any pressure, comes out to grab it. And that could be difficult for a goalkeeper not having much action, having to come out and make a save. Well done for her to be decisive, come out, be brave, especially with the likes of Anamanu. On the field now for Sky Blue. Her, the timing of her runs, her ability to get in behind the back line, something that to keep an eye on in this second half. Can they play a bit more direct Sky Blue? Even from the feet of Sheridan, we know her range. She can play out of the back, but her range is impeccable as well. Why not try to hit a direct ball, see if you can catch Utah's defense unbalanced. This runs all the way through. You know, the NWSLshop.com is going to be exciting, but we should mention Sky Blue FC set a merchandise record. This is just coming to mind. Over $30,000 in merch in one day. So they set a franchise record there. And then you can go over to skybluefc.com. I love what they're doing. The white jerseys they're wearing today, they're actually going to auction off game-used signed jerseys, which is incredible. They call these the lightning strike kits. They're alternate. Money raised for the Loveland Foundation and Urban Indian Center of Salt Lake. So not only giving to a cause that everyone on the team believes in in New Jersey, but also giving the community in Salt Lake City who've been so kind to the eight teams who have made their way out. So a phenomenal, phenomenal series of things that these teams are doing, really. I think we're going to see, start to see individuals and teams do even more as well. Sofia Huerta, O.L. Reign, attacker, donated over $16,000 to the Loveland Foundation as well. She auctioned off FaceTime, 20-minute FaceTimes, signed U.S. <laughs> Women's National Team jerseys, signed boots. And unbelievable, you start to see why this tournament is so important, not only for these players to be able to get out in the field and have some sort of resemblance of a season, but also to be able to use their platforms in a way that they feel. And yet on the field still, these players seeking a title have so much to think about. Excellent ball through Matheson. Barrow pirouettes through pressure. 
has Rodriguez available. There's Amy Rodriguez, scored in the 41st minute. Out to Bowen on the right-hand side. Settled for ball. Great step in by Anamanu. And now Sky Blue the other way. Anamanu in a foot race. And Smith has to leave the area, kick it out for a throw. That is one player making a tremendous impact on the field. Her ability to be able to make those run time runs. And Kujo does a good job of perfectly timed pass into her, her run. But well done by Elizabeth Ball. Just making sure she's in good position. Doesn't get beat by the speed of Anamanu. But those are the areas where Sky Blue can continue to exploit. Good ball through, and Sky Blue is offside. Elizabeth Eddy looked like she had timed that just right. Thumbs up for the service for sure. And this is Sarah Waldmo, the player that we want on the ball for Sky Blue. Be able to dictate the tempo, pull the strings in there. Good look, just offside though for Elizabeth Eddy. But more penetrating runs than we saw in the first half from Sky Blue. Never Diana, tested that back line. Diana Matheson will come off. Now comes Gunny Jan's daughter. Saw Jan's daughter from the get-go in the opener. Talk about experience coming on the field. Diana Matheson, her experience in this league with the Canadian national team, and then you bring on Jan's daughter, stalwart in the midfield for Utah over several years. The ground that she covers, we saw her play out wide. Tuesday's game now most likely will sit in the midfield, help clog things up, play alongside Vero. Jan's daughter played in Iceland and Norway in her native Iceland, 65 caps in nine years. The national team. I may have done my math wrong, truth be told. Never my strong suit. And this is a matchup we just saw Cujo not giving any space to Vera. And this is a matchup that Freya Coombe talked about, that she was looking forward to, knowing that Cujo was going to check in in the second half in that sixth position. Big test for that young player. See if she can slow down the likes. Spanish international. Precisely the matchup that Sky Blue staff was excited to see. Set piece here for Utah, swung in front. This goes lofting well over. Let's go to Marissa with more on the substitute for Utah. Utah assistant coach Amy LaPelbit told me that the Gunny Young's daughter substitution was to really shore up that midfield, make it more defensively sound as Sky Blue is continuing to put pressure on them. But really, she said this second half is all about asking the question, can we continue to be patient in our buildup, switch the point of the attack, and get in behind Sky Blue? And to have the ability to bring on an experienced player for an experienced player that has a bit of a different look on the field for you. Diana Matheson, good in the attack, excellent on defense as well, but Jan Zutter known more for her ability defensively, getting into tackles, good position on the field to make sure they don't get played through. When you're looking at this tournament as a whole and having players that you're able to rotate to be able to bring on experienced players to be able to rest others, that's a positive for your team and not miss a beat. And that was a question mark for Utah coming in, an aging midfield in terms of all of these players besides Labonta that have been on the field over the age of 30, how much would they be able to go with a short time period in between games? And that's where managing not only the minutes, but also the game within the game is so important. Knowing when to speed up play, slow things down, keep the ball to save your legs. Hour into this one, Utah ahead of Sky Blue, goal to zero. 
Amy Rodriguez scored five minutes before halftime. Win here for Utah puts them in second behind North Carolina, who have won their two opening games. And Utah right now, the joint leading scoring team in the tournament alongside North Carolina. They've scored four. North Carolina scored two in each of their games. Not a down to Bowen. Ratcliffe goes 1v1, now slices it all the way across the six yard box. And this is the first time that we've seen Utah really take on down the in line. We've seen a lot of cut back, recycling of the ball, keeping possession, and then whipping balls in deep. But I like Brittany Ratcliffe and her willingness to take on 1v1. That was a dangerous ball across. No one there to connect with, though. deeper-lying possession into opportunities. We've seen Anamanu come on at halftime and provide a real pop up front. Facing after it again. Anamanu objects. It's Utah's ball here. And this is what you want from your substitutes. Having impact forcing those Utah players, to, defenders, to face their own goal, get out of pressure, pressure situa situations. She did a good job, Anumanu, starting in the game against O.L. Reign, causing some trouble, getting on the ball, creating chances for herself. See if she can continue that to, this afternoon. Lewandowski. Hurst. I'll check on an injured Utah player. That's Michelle Mamon. So Maimon getting stretched out. Utah took the lead in the 41st minute. Amy Rodriguez there helping out her teammate. Helped out the whole team with this goal. And the celebration, it's not all about her. Where is she pointing? Two sons and, and her husband out in the stands. <laughs> enjoying the game here. Inside the bubble, Ryan, Luke, husband, Adam. And then off to the, the <laughs> playground. This has gotten so much pub on Twitter. This looks familiar. I'm pretty sure Commissioner Lisa Baird was playing on this a couple of games ago. <laughs> you know, you People think... People of all ages, Mike. <laughs> I know, I know. I don't fit on that slide anymore. <laughs> you might. Amy Rodriguez, one of the all-time greats in this league, one of the greats in American soccer all-time, and all the things she's battled through to play at such a high level over the years, both through injuries and working her way back after maternity, she is an incredible athlete, and it really carries over into how she approaches the locker room as well. 
and I've, it's been fun for me to watch because I played with Amy at the early stages of her career when she was a young rookie all the way to the middle stages when she was playing with the U.S. Women's National Team, a starter, the 2011 World Cup, and, and to now to see her as an experienced player leading her team. And you can see the energy she brings, the ability to make runs off the ball on the field. But again, just her lightheartedness off the field brings so much to this team. Such a game changer. Zierra King checking in. Replacing Ratcliffe, scored in the 89th minute of her professional debut. Wonderful service. Said she doesn't put her head on many balls in the box, but did there. And this is an easy ball with that wicked bounce there. It's tough to be able to get something on it, but all she has to do is redirect it. See Jane Campbell, Campbell already trying to predict where she's going to go, and that's the only place she could have finished. Well done with the timing of her run and just to redirect that to keep that low and on frame. Some housekeeping here. Cujo was just shown a yellow card as the ball had just gotten back into play. Meanwhile, Mallory Weber has come on. Cujo, that yellow card, puts her on a warning moving forward through the rest of the preliminary round. Puts her leg in there and got Vero. Just a late touch, but has done well to keep Vero guessing. Picked off by Sheridan. Ball skipped up the bit. King will give chase as Real plays it back. Sheridan with the distribution out wide. Flores into a pocket of space. Waldmo ahead to Kawasumi, who's moved wider. Waldmo, longest tenured Sky Blue player in the NWSL. Hanamanu, Waldmo, settled Richardson. Looks like Sky Blue's arguing for a corner kick. Felt like there was a deflection. We've seen Dami Richardson score, strike from this distance before, and this is better positioning from Sky Blue. They're patient in the attack, something that we are looking for coming into this second half. Can they have better build-up play? Recycle the ball around, and we're starting to see Sarah Waldmo get on the ball even more in those little half pockets of space to be more dangerous going forward. The likes of Cujo coming onto the field, she can sit back more defensively, allowing Dami Richardson to take more of an attacking role. Jan's daughter. Pushes ahead. Amy Rodriguez goes to work. Plenty of time. Picks out her pass. Aimed back post. Corsi. You know, the NWSL fans, they, they are so creative. The background there was NWSL farmland. The playground got its own Twitter. <laughs> I changed my Twitter to Lori Lindsay Stan. <laughs> At this point, I think we're all just having fun with this. We're, we're 70 minutes into the second game for both Utah and Sky Blue in the NWSL Challenge Cup. with CBS and Twitch along for the ride. Fans are going to be able to see every minute of this tournament. 
The action already at times has certainly been scintillating. Late game winners, late equalizers. Can Utah pour it on here? Will Sky Blue find an answer? Slid ahead by King. Reversal and now clipped long. I'd still like to see Utah continue to occupy those wide spaces. That's how they're going to continue to free up their midfielders, find opportunities in and around the box. Stay wide, look to see if you can switch the point of attack. It's going to force Sky Blue to chase defensively as well. Falling. In a tournament like this, if you're Utah, how much of this is using these final 20 minutes to continue to solidify how you want to play as Barrow steps forward? And now King got an additional touch. This would have been a, an offside play without doubt versus trying to make sure you actually win the game. How much of this is situational play versus trying to set up your system with a new coach? It is a balancing act, and it's what I was talking about earlier in terms of managing the game within the game. You don't have trying to build and set play and understand the principles of your team, so you don't want to overhaul and create so much change in your team that you don't continue to build that continuity, but at the same time, how can you keep players on the field and be able to close out games with possession, but still at the same time with the urgency, the urgency to score goals when those opportunities open up. Flores out, Skrosky on for Sky Blue. Both teams are able to use eight substitutes. Uh, sorry, five substitutes in three windows. <laughs> I'm adding numbers. So there you go, two left on one side, one on the other. Driving forward, and now the shot deflects away. Labonta thought she'd give it a go. So five subs aside in three windows per team. Lori, should we have eight subs? No. <laughs> Everybody off. <laughs> King. King had Rodriguez curling around and making a run. And not the shot that King would want, doesn't get a good look on it. We talked about this player, this young rookie coming in, scoring that big goal on Tuesday. And anytime you have her running at your back line, that's exactly what you want. Now it'll be about Cleaning up the decision making, seeing Amy Rodriguez and making the run that would free her up and just slotting that ball through. When we spoke with the staff at Utah, be patient. Think in, in terms of 12, 24, even 36 months down the line. Anytime you talk about a rookie, and in this case, the only rookie that scored a goal in this tournament happened to be a, a game time goal in the 89th minute. But also, I mean, opinionated and someone who, who can have a bubbly personality but also fierce on and off the field. I'll talk about changing Twitter accounts. I think you and I changed ours to yeah. the Eric King number one fan. Yeah, right. <laughs> but I love that from Harrington. His willingness to be patient with her, sees get the quality that she has on the ball, what she brings to the locker room, and not forcing anything. Bowen. Driving run by King. Bowen makes her move, lays it off, and Barrow slipped on the turf a bit. I think I saw a smile there from Bowen. Uncharacteristic of Vero. Good build up play. This is the wide area that Utah has had so much success in today. Vera does a good job of timing her run, but just gets underneath her, leaning back. Good option, though, from a late runner, a midfielder coming into the box. Too tight of a ball to be able to whip your hips around.
75 minutes in the books, and it is a hydration break. Temperatures spiking into the upper 80s in Utah. Amy Rodriguez scored in the 41st minute, and Utah Royals FC lead Sky Blue with 15 minutes and stopping. to play a goal to zero in the NWSL Challenge Cup as you're watching the NWSL on CBS Sports. Amy Rodriguez playing in front of an audience of many, but certainly an audience of three in the stands. Her family watching as A-Rod grabs her first goal of 2020. Comes off a of Ratcliffe, and A-Rod makes that darting run all the way. And this is some of the best soccer I've seen Amy Rodriguez play. Her work rate defensively, her willingness to get into the box, make little runs to test that back line. And this is a perfectly weighted pass by Vero, just into the path of an even more perfectly timed run by Amy Rodriguez. Slots that one to the far post. Rodriguez had the captain's armband off as she was making her way over, but fastened it back on. First goal of the tournament, nine a year ago. And certainly it's going to be a different look for Utah when Kristen Press is with the team. She opted out of the tournament as she is within her right to do, and several other players did the same. But Amy Rodriguez and her up front, Craig Harrington says ad nauseum, you're only as good as your center forward. You have two great ones. <laughs> And we saw late last year after the 2019 World Cup what those two players could do. Up until that point in time, struggled to get multiple goals in a game. But then the two of them building that partnership really came alive, helped their team have some success towards the end of that season. Goals flowing like a waterfall when those two are on the field together. And then you mentioned Kelly O'Hara earlier, day to day in terms of her recovery, but add her on the flank. Talk about dynamic, unpredictable getting into the attack. Into the 78th minute here on CBS Sports as the NWSL Challenge Cup continues. Utah up a goal and looking for another one. Ball for Rodriguez goes out. Estelle Johnson came on. Kaylee Reel came out. Reel, a second round pick, made her NWSL debut. Stella Johnson, quite the opposite, one of the more grizzled veterans in the league. Corner Utah, 79th minute, caught by Sheridan. Let's go down to Marissa. I spoke with Sky Blue assistant coach Becca Morris about that Estelle Johnson sub, and she said our center backs need to be playmaking rather than our goalkeeper. She wants Johnson to establish possession in order to get the ball to the midfield so that their attack can begin to build. I think the ability to have players like Estelle Johnson to come on, an experienced defender, to be able to help playmake, build out of the back, Stay true to your principles of play, even though you're down 1-0, haven't had much possession. There's a quality substitution. They need to continue, though, to see if they can be more unpredictable in terms of not only just building out of the back, but looking to see if they can play more direct. We were hopeful for that with the substitution of Anamano early in the second half. I haven't seen much of that outside of those first 10 minutes. room here. Jan's daughter closed down expertly but plays it wide. Bowen a chance to maybe ping it across. Bowen this time. Bouncing ball. Rodriguez continues to chase. We talked about it from the very beginning of this game, Lori. Utah might have been the single biggest surprise of the opening round of games as Ball appeared to get knocked up high. Well, Harrington was even hired 
at the time of the draft. I, I was asking him, <laughs> so what did you think of King of the Draft? Wait, I wasn't there. <laughs> right. Of course. So we're talking super new coach, new faces coming into this team, new style of play, new formation. That basically you're trying to solidify in a three-week time frame. And we saw a lot of coaches in this league say, hey, we're not going to change anything because there wasn't enough time. And Harrington's like, we don't have time either way, so we're just <laughs> <laughs> might as well go with something. <laughs> The general manager of this Utah side is Stephanie Lee, who talked about the priorities in bringing in a new head coach. And Laura Harvey left to work with the U.S. national team. But someone who understands the competitive level of the league, built on the established principles of the organization that Laura and Deloy Hansen, the owner, had put in place as King tried to spring through and Sheridan lobs it ahead for Skrosky. But a, a holistic vision of progressing women's soccer was a major portion of why Craig Harrington specifically got this job in the end. And what stands out to me the most out of that, too, is just having experience within the league. Something we touch on with Becca Moros, her understanding of playing, but then also with Craig Harrington, his time at Chicago. It is so vital to understand this league is the parity between each team, the nuances the grind of the season. So if you have familiarity, just gives you a leg up coming in as a head coach or assistant coach. Ball. Levanta. And Mike Ball, number seven in the back the bottom of your screen. I've been extremely impressed with her throughout this first two games. Her position defensively, one of the areas was of concern coming into this tournament was the back three of those center backs and what that was going to look like going against some of these strikers. But they've done well in terms of working together as a unit, her in particular, when to step, when to stay with the line. And that's when the value of playing next to Rachel Corsi with the amount of experience she has will come into play. A vocal leader. A bright future for this team for Elizabeth Ball to step in and play with a lot of maturity. Tonight on CBS All Access, 10 p.m. Eastern, Houston with Rachel Daly's brace helping them draw against Utah in their opener, taking on O.L. Reign in their second game under new management. Gareep Vincidi leading that side. Free game coverage on CBS Sports HQ. Free online, 9.45 p.m. Eastern. Here comes Sky Blue looking for Anamanu. Haven't seen Purse get this high up the field much in this second half. Makes her move now. They get a third bite of the apple. And now crosses beyond Anamanu. Sky Blue a bit stretched. Johnson slides it away. King was following in the footsteps in the footsteps of Rodriguez. King for Vero. Corner coming. Here. Amy Rodriguez will go to the closest point of the field that she can to come off. Scored in the 41st. That's a couple turnovers deep in the sky blue. half barrel through king charging on the rookie ball lost by sheridan now she has it Rivero just having some fun showing her quality on the ball and then a little no look pass into the path of 
Zara King. That run takes her outside of the goal line, though, so it's going to be difficult to get herself into a scoring chance. But anytime you see the likes of those two players starting to link up, a rookie coming in, it's a partnership that you want to continue to see build. Especially when you look at how important Amy Rodriguez has been sitting on that yellow card, knowing that it's going to be difficult with the quick succession of these games to continue to play every minute. So you can get some of these younger players stepping up, getting themselves in good scoring positions. Always promising going into these late rounds, especially heading into the quarterfinals. Well, the cards do reset at that point after the four games. Provide a sigh of relief. Mitch Purse. Anamanu checks back to maintain possession for Sky Blue. Into the 90th minute. Goal here for Sky Blue could be a point. Could prove massive in seeding as we go on. Kawasomi in front. Ball whisked around. And now Smith bobbles in front. And picking it up and carrying away. Under immense pressure, Utah able to clear it. Mallory Weber goes ahead. Mike, you asked me about the buildup with Sky Blue and what that looks like. This is where we haven't talked about McCall Zavoni because we knew that she was going to get some rest in this game. Pretty scripted out for, for Sky Blue. But they are missing her presence, her leadership, her wanting and willingness to get on the ball to help set play. And once they get her back into the starting lineup, we'll see a different look going forward for Sky Blue. Ninety minutes and into five minutes of stoppage time. Bowen collides. Barrel. Ujo, Kawasumi, Anamanu checks back again. Sky Blue just can't seem to get even across half field off the not in possession late in this game. That was a great read. The Baba King. King is through. And out comes Sheridan. Got to touch that. Flag was up. Oh, the star, Zierra King, nearly got even higher. And she does well to time her run. And just at the last second offside, it almost looks like she is onside. I think that's a close call, actually. And a look in the secret virtual watch party powered by Google Meet as these Utah fans are enjoying the final minutes of this one, one which they hope is a win before a game against O.L. Reign on Wednesday afternoon, Wednesday morning in Utah. 12.30 Eastern kickoff, 10.30 in Harriman. Pre-game coverage coming on CBS Sports HQ, and then Sky Blue plays Houston in the nightcap. Smith will try and allow some of the air out of the ball. Halfway through stoppage. Delfaba. that Weber up there. Weber a 
Night Shield winner and champion. Acquired on waivers in May. Three minutes burned in stoppage time. King stepped in, and now Utah has it. Ship, first in pursuit. Ship with a smile on her face, knows Silly foul. She, she disagrees with that one. <laughs> By the same token, tick, tick, tick. got a yellow card for that as well part of I'm sure why she was smiling something she now has to keep in mind while she's on the field moving forward in the preliminary round offside flag is up here of course he also took the brunt of that Seconds away from a great result for Utah. Smith drives it away. Corner for Utah. Extra stoppage being added on. Some of those breaks we've had, but not much left. And there it is, Utah's first win of the tournament. Craig Harrington's first win as Utah Royals FC head coach. one nothing over Sky Blue to move to second in the NWSL Challenge Cup preliminary round. One thing that you and I highlighted that might come into this game for Utah was one step forward, building off of that result that they had last Tuesday. They did just that, creating chances in a variety of ways and getting a fantastic goal 